So welcome back, everyone. So today we have um, uh, some more detail on these gravitating vortices that uh, Oscar was telling us about on Friday. There's going to be two talks now about the subject. So the first one by Luis Alvarez Consul is going to speak on obstructions to the existence of gravitating vortices. <clears throat> Thank you for the invitation to speak here. Uh, it's a great place to say it. Uh, so the joint work with Mario Garcia Fernandez, uh, who will speak next, uh, Oscar Garcia Prada, who spoke uh, last week, uh, uh, Van Sepingali, who will speak on Friday, and Chen Jiang Yao, uh, who will not speak this time. <laughs> So I want to start with some um, classical physics uh, to introduce the equations I want to study. Uh, later, we'll give a moment of interpretation and uh, same time of traction. So I'll fix um, um, space time, okay. Or four manifolds and uh, a Hermitian line model. Okay, and I want to couple, um, I mean, study a physical, physical theory uh, which couples some new the Riemannian metric. A unitary connection on the line bundle. And uh, a Higgs field. So that will be a section, smooth section of the line bundle. Okay, then applying usual physics, you write a, an action functional. Depending on all these data, so it's usually written as, as some constraints uh, times the Hubert Einstein uh, action. So this S is different from that one. This is Taylor Kevacha with respect to the metric. So this is by R. This will have some um, matter Lagrangian reaction. Mm -hmm. That well, you can choose some potential, and as in some talks yesterday, you can choose. Um, the action. Um, some uh, interaction. And some potential. So now here, you usually add some order parameter, lambda, and most of the time you choose it. This potential, okay? So this is a symmetry breaking parameter. You study this in integral 
statistics. Now we su suppose we are in the log of only phase. Phase time is is uh, the Riemann surface times some um, this this uh, time and one one vertical direction. So we have coordinates local coordinates x one and x two on the Riemann surface z and t on r one one. Okay. Actually, don't be called back. Uh, what else? You you can suppose. I mean, we we are going to simplify the the usual Lagrangian equations in this case. So the metric will be the the, the orthogonal sum of of some metric here, okay. And uh, you like Minkowski on the, on the other two directions. Yeah? So this is the third, the fourth coordinates. You also suppose, uh, that uh, the other data actually pull back of data from the Riemann surface, okay. So we see it's a canonical projection, then All of this is probably so now we can drop this up to with M. Okay. So these are the assumptions I will use throughout this talk. So here now L is a Hermitian line bundle. And uh, A is a unitary connection. And Phi is a smooth section. Okay. And there, there are many, I mean, these kind of uh, situations have been studied a lot. Uh, in physics. And in mathematical physics too. Uh, in the way I want to study them, uh, they were formulated by Yi Song Yang. Uh, in 1995. So under the these assumptions, uh, this invariance in the in one space direction and time direction, uh, and uh, this is important that we are, we are in this space. Uh, the Euler Lagrange equations become the following: um, Pell's dual Einstein Maxwell Higgs equations. So this is the um, vortex equation that has 
uh, in Paris. I mean, last week and, and in Manton start yesterday, at least. Pi is homomorphic. And this is a new equation that didn't appear yesterday, for instance. So these are the equations I want to study. On here, well, if you start with uh, the well, cap is the issue of x. So, so Luis, are these really the Euler equations or the Bogomolny equations? For yeah, these are the Bogomolny equations, but in the in the abelian case, they're equivalent. Not in the non-abelian case. I mean, this, this is the theorem. Yeah. Not yet. Well, it, it is a condition. It comes. It follows from this. If you are right. Yeah. Okay. So this alpha. G is the gravitational constant. Okay, so I don't know whether I need to, I mean, you know, this is the curvature two form of the, the connection. Maybe I can write what this is. This is the usual contraction. Mm -hmm. And I guess the rest is here. Mm -hmm. This is the, the, the location used in differential geometry. So. Of the positive eigenvalue. value. <laughs> mm -hmm. And uh, I mean, Yang was and actually other people were interested in these equations because they they are supposed to describe uh, um, topological uh, defects. In the universe. I mean, they, they are called solutions are called cosmic strings. Okay. And some some people who work on this on the net uh, and take. Uh, Uh, yep. So this is the motivation of the talk. Um, In previous work, uh, we had developed some tools that actually work in this case to, to study these, these equations. I mean, we, we were studying the Kähler and Young Mills equations that Oscar mentioned last week, and they apply the, the tools we use, developed there apply to these equations. So now, now this is the, the physical origin of the equations. I'm now going to talk about the symplectic origin, which is different. Okay. A 
Okay. So, I mean, this, this comes, uh, this, this viewpoint of, uh, you know, gauge theory and uh, metric equations has a long history that may start with uh, Silla and Dot. In the paper in 1983, and has been applied a lot by Donaldson, Jiki, uh, the people in, for instance, the concept scalar curvature telemetric problem. So, as before, we speak um, Michel Lehmann, though. Very compact human surface, and uh, the parameters that you should appear before some constants. Um, then I want to describe those equations as um, the vanishing of a moment map. Then apply simplectic theory there. Interstate geometry. So, this this space will be. Let's see. Ripples. K A I. So. Now say what J and J is. J, J is a complex structure on X, such that this is scalar. A is a unitary connection. I is um, a section. And uh, well, we impose the second condition, so it's holomorphic. So this is the space. It's an infinite dimensional, possibly with singularities. Uh, uh, so I can view it as inside uh, the product of the space of complex structures. Um, Compatible, compatible with omega, space of unitary connections, A, and uh, space of sections, S. And uh, each of these three have a symplectic structure. Uh, this has been studied by precisely these two people, Jiki and Donaldson. I have to see that I can actually write this too much. Mm -hmm. Okay. Shall I write some formulas? I don't know. Hmm? Uh, I mean, it's tangent space to the space of. Um, Complex structures is, is the morphism of the tangent bundle. And well, you, you the scalar condition means these two. Okay. And uh, it has it has a Complexity structure.
mean, if I have to impose invariance, no? You know, this just here. I mean, you can think of them as dimensional reduction. Mm -hmm. So we have this symplectic form on, on the space of complex structures. And uh, well, this has been studied by Fujik and Donaldson. Uh, he and both studied this on the factor. In this case, the... Um, Symplectic structure can be written on the line bundle like this. Yep. And of course, the space section. Another symplectic structure. Then I take the following symplectic structure on the space of triples. Omega alpha. We just take the sum in some ways. Just it's convenient to write as four times alpha. So, And in fact, I mean, one, one can see that these are, in fact, um, infinite dimensional scalar <coughs> manifolds. And this is scalar precisely when alpha is positive, this, this omega alpha. So this is the space in which I want to obtain a moment map. Uh, so I need a group action. So, and I know by work of uh, Fujiki and Donaldson that uh, the group of Hamiltonian symplectomorphisms Has a Hamiltonian action on the space of complex structures such that uh, actually it has a moment map. I mean, it acts by pullback uh, and the moment map. Um, 
knew that sometimes it was uh, kept just cinematic. Okay, so this is scalar capture of the k matrix of this is the omega and j. So since I have these, these uh, results, uh, I want an action on this phase T. Uh, yeah. Um, it should act on the line bundle. Sorry, on, on the space of connections on the line bundle. So you can think about the gauge group, but actually you don't fix the base. Uh, so you define the extended gauge group. I don't, I don't want to fix the base, so actually have a, a group that covers this, this other group. So my group will be the extended gauge group. Find as follows. This is the space of uh, unitary automorphisms of the line bundle. So in the usual gate theory, you, you assume that they cover the identity on the base manifold. Now, I only assume that it covers Hamiltonian six automorphisms. It's not hard to write uh, an action of this on the space of connections. You, you can think of connections on splitting because of the Atiyah showing track sequence, and then uh, you, you can pre compose them with, uh, yeah, with G check and post compose with G and then obtain another one. So that's the way it acts in connections. Of course, it acts on uh, complex axes because each. G covers some G check, some Hamiltonian simplectomorphisms, and uh, well, there is a canonical action also on the space of X fields. So this actually preserves this space T. So to, to write some formulas, uh, well, we have this extension, uh, group extension. So G is the gate group, I mean, gate transformations that cover the identity are in the kernel of the map that each extended gate transformation assigns uh, the Hamiltonian symplectomorphism that it covers. So this determines a uh, Lie algebra extension. And uh, well, the, the, the Lie algebra of, uh, of the group H be identified with smooth functions up to some constant with uh, some brackets. So I can just normalize. So each function determines a Hamiltonian vector field.
by the usual formula. Then I can write uh, the moment map for this, this action. We can do gauge group on the space of triples. The proposition is that uh, the G action on C is Hamiltonian. with moment map given um, the old triples given by complex structure J Connection A on a field I, and for all infinitesimally um, extended gauge transformations, so these are vector fields on on the total space of L. Mm -hmm. And this moment map of the following formula. We have two terms corresponding to the first and the third equation I wrote roughly <laughs> after some manipulations. So the first term is related to the vortex equation. So this is the imaginary unit I. And this is a vertical projection. determined by, by the connection A times, so this is a um, purely imaginary number uh, uh, function. Okay. Times the vortex equation. Okay, so this is the first term. This is the adult bundle. And uh, the other term, well, to, to write it, you, you, you need, well, you remember that uh, this um, infinitesimal gauge transformation, extended gauge transformation over some vector fields on the base that I call check in detail. So it has to be Hamiltonian by definition. So it's uh, the Hamiltonian vector fields for some function S. And then the term has this formula. A new term. Okay. And uh, I want to define gravitating vortices as solutions and as zeros of this moment map, okay? A 
I will take a slightly different point of view and uh, fix the holomorphic data and vary the, the um, what was fixed here, omega and h. Okay, but that doesn't, doesn't make any difference really. It will be useful later for the reflections. So, fix a holomorphic line bundle. On a compact linear sensor. Then the gravitating vortex equation are the zeros of this moment map that expressed, let me give it just for convenience. Or triples omega to the Kähler form H, the Hermitian metric on the line bundle, and phi, uh, the holomorphic section of the line bundle. So this is the usual. What is question? And this is the deformation of the constant scalar curvature condition. And by this alpha term. Where? Um, I mean, here it was a compact game of ethics. All this theory can be actually done on any symplectic uh, manifold of Taylor type, but I'm just considering this case. But you're right, you could have so far everything works in more generality. But uh, I mean, the relation to cosmic strings is not here in that case. So, I mean, they are geometrically interesting, but uh, I don't know what the physics is. In that case, yeah. So we, we x will always be Riemann Riemann set of two dimensional. So these are the equations I wrote in the first section, but we, in that case, c was zero. Uh, okay, that's a special case. It's a real number actually determined by the topological data. They are, oh, where? Oh, yes, yes, you're right. Thank you. Yeah, it's the same here as there. And the point is, the vanishing um, the Vomme map is equivalent to this condition. Okay, one, one can play with these, these formulas and see that they're equivalent. And it's clear in the, for the first term, and you have to play a little bit with the other one to see that this is equivalent to this, but it's, it's not that far. But the same thing is that this means uh, we can't construct the model as a symplectic reduction. Right? Yep. And try to apply the theory of symplectic reductions in the relation to Taylor geometry in this case. Uh, 
Now remember also that uh, the first equation, I mean, the existence of solutions of the first equation was reviewed yesterday by Nick Manton, and I guess, uh, I'm sure you, you did, no? That too. So there is this theorem, at least by uh, Noguchi, Bradlow, Garcia Prada, with different, completely different proofs. So the existence of solutions show of the fixed equation. It's equivalent to this numerical condition. One is one uh, direction is very easy, you just integrate, and the other one is the hard part. Now, the other one was studied first, uh, as far as I know, that by, by Yi Song Yang in the same paper I mentioned before. So, integrating the second. equation well, you, and applying some of formula for this other one but it's a very easy we get what C is okay so Yang observed he was interested in the case of mixed strings. So of course, this, this means uh, the only characteristic is non negative. And uh, so unit is zero. That means. We have to study of mixes on on the women's sphere in the two sphere. Uh huh. Yes. Well, <laughs> it, it, that depends on whether you think that space time is is. Yeah, in many models, yes, it, but uh, in the one, study, one, one of the uh, models studied by Yang, he has also studied the ones you're saying, he you says it's space time. You're right, he also studied the other ones. You're, you're thinking about this case, right? But I'm thinking about, uh, about another case. Because I want to compact. Uh, uh, perfect. But yeah, I could say no, I don't want it. That's a different problem. Okay. In that case, there are many solutions. It's the case you are saying. So, as I said, I want to apply symplectic uh, geometry to study these equations, and I will focus on some abstractions to the existence of solutions. So, as before, I fix uh, L and X. Let's call J the complex structure on the Riemann surface, and I the complex structure in the total space of the line bundle, holomorphic line bundle. Okay, we, we fix 
like a homology class of uh, right volume. I want to study solutions of the gravitating vortex equations uh, with uh, some fixed volume. Okay. Then I want to, so this, this is the fixed data and I uh, want to vary this B is a pair given by two metrics. I, I think of uh, the simplistic structure in terms of the associated Cater metric. The following space, the pairs omega h, so omega have some the fixed volume I said, and that before this is scalar, and h is a Hermitian metric. Okay, so maybe the, the only difference with respect to what I said there earlier is that now phi is fixed. But I want to study this space. It's an infinite dimensional space. Uh, the case in which there is no line bundle was studied uh, before by uh, people in, in the problem of constant scalar curvature, kinematics and scalar equations. Uh, and as in that case, this is, a, if you like, a, an infinite dimensional symmetric space. It's not Riemann in this case, but uh, point is, I mean, if you if you if you are familiar with a Kempfner theory, this is supposed to be something like uh, when you have a group. A compact group G acting on a convective manifold, scalar manifold with complex simplification G C, then this will be playing the role of this, of this space. But uh, you, you never mind, we, we don't, you don't need this. Uh, the point is the group, we'll call this gamma I of. By holomorphic, holomorphic or homomorphisms are covering G check in the identity component of, of the group of the holomorphisms. Base. Well, this acts on B by pullback. Okay, it fixes the volume. Mm -hmm. how, how much time do you need hmm? still? How much time? It again? How much time do you need? Still. Oh, yeah. So I don't have too much more. No? Right. Uh, but maybe minutes is too much. No? But five ten, minutes. Five hmm? minutes. You can have five minutes. Five minutes. Five. Okay. I will. I will do it in five minutes. Then uh, we have this action, uh, and something very important is that the extended uh, gauge group I mentioned earlier, uh, it's, it's this V algebra, is isomorphic to the tangent. I such a point. Uh, if you just take a vector field and consider the action of, of that vector field multiplied by, by the complex structure on, on L. This is an isomorphism. Okay. So we'll call the inverse is this. Okay. Then I can 
define a one form. by B using the moment map. So AH is the churn connection. And it happens if it's closed. And so one can now define the contact invariant. It's a character of the Lie algebra of infinity automorphisms of uh, the line bundle and Higgs field. Um, I'm, I'm going to do this and using the uh, one form. Remember why why is is the infinity action in this. Okay, and uh, using the fact that sigma is, is closed, one can prove a theorem. I have like three minutes <laughs> of this count. <laughs> okay. So this this map. It's independent. I'm not just applying formally uh, uh, known theory of, about Kähler uh, actions of Greg on symplectic and Kähler geometry. Map F is independent of the choice of B. And uh, if there exists a uh, gravity open vortex, then F is zero. So I, ha I don't have time to write the explicit formula. You can write an explicit formula for the Futaki invariant, but I have no time. You, you can use it to on, on P1 to actually obtain obstruction to the existence of solutions. So just one theorem one could I can prove uh, it's for instance that there exists no solution. This is the last theorem. The gravitating vortex equation. On uh, P one, this line bundle O n, O n is any positive number, integer. With For instance, I mean, they're all the same from the group vanishing on exactly two points. And this answers some uh, conjectures of, of Lee Song Yang. Uh, <coughs> two points with different multiplicities. Prove this, you 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 find you compute explicitly for some trait of B the Futaki invariant and and find that F is non-zero in un, unless they have the same multiplicities. This is I think a good time to stop. Thank you. So any questions for questions for Luis? Hello. 
So my question is, actually I have two questions. First question, so in the Keller-Einstein setting, Gang Tian proved that for complex dimension two, uh, Putaki invariant vanishes means Keller-Einstein metric exists. Mm -hmm. So do you expect similar result here? I mean, um, kind of in no. inverse of this theorem. No, the expectation is different. Isn't it? I mean, on, on genus greater than or equal to two, yes, but in genus zero, you don't expect that. There is a PGL2 action. You expect that uh, the Higgs field has to be semi stable for that action. So you need more condition. Again? So you need more condition? Or? Yeah, you, you need uh, semi stability Semis. of the Higgs field. Or the SL2 or PGL2 action in the space of uh, divisors where phi lives, where the heat field lives. Yeah. And uh, and is there any localization formula for your Putaki invariant so that we can calculate? There, there, there could be, but I haven't, haven't thought about that. Yeah, you mean under the action of S1, for instance? Or... So localization formula, I'm saying. So, so you just calculate so this if. Mm -hmm. so I mean, there, there is a, an explicit formula you can yes. write. Which, which mm -hmm. actually depends on the zero z of the um, vector field you are taking. On, again? Oh. on zero z of the- Oh, yeah, 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 you can, yeah, you, yeah you are, you're right. Yeah, you can do that. Yeah, I didn't think about the, the localization formula. Yes. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. yes, thanks. So we have another question on this side. Uh, so, uh, um, so there you write down kind of the complexified gauge group roughly, right? The, Where? The, there. Oh, this. Yeah. Yeah, so it's like a homomorphism group of, of, of the line bundle and the, and the, and the yeah, surface. But what I'm, I'm worried about is that uh, on the unitary side, you took the group of Hamiltonian diffeomorphisms on X. Yeah. And that's a very good big group right yeah this is this is kind of the this pretends is, to be the, the complexification no i don't think this is no it isn't yeah, yeah. It, it, it pretends to be but there is no complexification in this right this problem right yeah i see so this is not the complexified uh, no group. it doesn't exist in so this in is Kaler Einstein, uh, and constant scalar curvature Kaler metric problem there is no complexification and this is an extension of that problem so it can't happen i see okay the, so the, this I mean, is, the best you can have is this this b is the replacement for this, where G is a compact group in, in, in the usual theory and GC is a complexification. There's no GC, but there is a replacement for, for this. This is all you need for stability. You, you want geodesics here, and you compute some limits uh, to, to obtain the hilbert manfold weights. You know? And what you need here is some geodesics. And th th this, is, this has a canonical connection, and then you can talk about that. Okay, transformations, you mean, you mean complexified or all of them or unitary one? Hmm? Okay, let's see if I understand. The modular space is this. And you want to know what this is. This is G, G. okay, yeah. So this is um, automorphisms, unitary automorphisms. So it's called them uh, G. So you know, in, in gauge theory, you only consider the ones that cover the identity on the base manifold, right? But now you don't you you look for something more general. They call this G here. So this should cover. Huh? Exactly. Hamiltonian, yes. That's... Yeah? You, you've been T. 
You mean this T, this space of triples, yes. They don't preserve the J. What do you mean by the, the space of complex structures? Or? What do you think? I mean, this Hamilt uh, Hamiltonian simplex homomorphisms, right? And just in in the Donaldson theory, uh, Fujiki theory, this is exactly you know the yeah. group that preserves yeah. the it's complex Hamilton. structures, and the moment map is the scalar curvature. No. I guess we're talking about different no, groups. No, no, no. I think there is a confusion maybe here. This can be discussed. Yeah. But just coming to your first question, I mean, uh, Luis has explained, but the key word is symmetric space. So what oh, yeah. is crucial in the case of gauge theory is that the complex gauge group mod, the unitary gauge group is a symmetric space. In the case of Hamiltonian simplectomorphism, there is no complexification, but there is a symmetric space. I mean, this and the... Where you can have a study geodesics and so on. With a flat, with a connection, yeah, the, torsion free connection. The, this B can be thought as a symmetric space. It has a, some canonical affine connection, but it's torsion free and, and, and the curvature satisfies the initial condition. You can talk about geodesics, and that's what you really need. I think we should, um, yeah, continue the discussion over the lunch break which starts now, but before we should uh, thank Louise again. Thank you.